fire's got the temperature up all over the camp. Won't last long, though. Neither will we. How will we make it? Maybe we should. If you're worried about me... If we've got any surprises for each other... I don't think we're in much shape to do anything about it. Why don't we just wait here for a little while? See what happens. Welcome back, everybody, to the Film Bros Podcast. My name is Isaiah Lucas, and I'm joined by my co-hosts. Abraham and Nick. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm tired. Tired? I'm, I'm good. good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good, yeah. Tired? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty late. It's a long day. We're getting to it. Yeah. Definitely. You can't be tired after talking about this movie. You're going to be on your toes. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if dude. it could be one of you guys. Dude, I wish I could make that noise. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I would do it louder, but <laughs> sparing your guys' ears. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. That, the, the movie was crazy. Yeah. What'd you think? I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Like, I, I really liked it, and I kind of wish I would have watched it. I, I wish this was my rewatch, but it's sadly my first time watching the yeah, film. Yeah, first for all of us, right? Yeah, it was first for all of us. Yeah. All right. What'd you feel, A.B.? How'd you I feel liked about it? it? It's, I think it was a good movie. That's all you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's nothing extraordinary in my opinion. Okay. Okay. I will say I wasn't scared. Like this movie didn't. I, and I've talked about this before. I think I'm just a, immune to like mm. scary stuff. Yeah, it's I, not I, like I, I had saw that on uh, Entertainment Weekly. They named this their twelfth scariest movie of all time, which is crazy. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, so in I my, know. I don't know, like. I'm having even trouble just naming movies that just scare me in general, other than Hereditary. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what other, like, trope or what other themes would scare me, and I just mm. can't think of anything. I'm currently watching the uh, Conjuring series. Okay. And that is scaring me. Really? Yeah. I have to, I find myself watching, like, trash TV after I finish a film. <laughs> you, just, you sleep <laughs> with Grey's Anatomy sleep? on or yeah. something? Yeah. No, I'll put, like, Jersey Shore on. Oh, like, wow. Like, I can't. I just finished watching the first Conjuring with the house and all that, and I think I stayed up for two extra hours because I couldn't sleep. Yeah. And I I never seen any of them, so I was just like, bro. And I think it scared me because it said based on a true story. Yeah. Oh, right when you hear oh, that, you're yep. like, <laughs> and I was oh, like, whole puckers. And I was like, oh shoot, dude, like this is true. Yeah. Yeah. And then here I am now. Yeah. Although I didn't find it scary, I really freaking love this movie. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm upset at myself that I haven't watched it earlier. Same. And uh, I kind of sullied myself because now that I've watched reviews, I watched the 2011 one. So I oh. known, I've known i known a little bit about the thing and like where it came from. But I completely, like, I just watched the film and I was like, oh, okay, kind of your classic monster movie. But this is so much m- more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... It was awesome. Yeah. And and I can see why it's a classic. I also was really baffled why people didn't like it at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it was That kind of blew me. me away. I was like, how can you watch that? It'd be like, trash. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's got some great qualities. Yeah. Like, I don't want us to be too hot heavy right now, but yeah. I think it's better than Alien. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I That's a heavy take. People are going to give you some heat for that one. I... I know they will. They will. And they're both good movies, but this one, for some reason, it subverted all the expectations I had. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed what they did with all the characters and, and not, I mean, the, the thing was dangerous, but its main motive was to hide and to, to blend in. Yes. Which I thought was really interesting because it only really showed itself when it was forced to. Yeah. So it was a, an extra level of like, well, it's not only where is it, but 
who is it? Yeah. <laughs> so now you're you're asking yourself a bunch of questions because you know you not only can trust the corner that you're going to turn around, but now you can't trust the person in the room. Yeah. Which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Because it, it kind of put you on your toes with every character. Yeah. And it kept me more engaged because I was like, is he acting different? Yeah. What is he breathing? I can't tell. <laughs> like, you know, like it, it, that's part of the reason why I really enjoyed yeah. this movie. Um, Definitely. So I'm glad we we're going to be able to talk about it more. Yeah, and the movie we're talking about today is The Thing, um, 1982, directed by John Carpenter and written, helped written by uh, Bill Lancaster. Yeah, he wrote it for the screen. Right. This is, this is originally based off of a, a short story or a novella that was written by John W. Campbell Jr. or something like yes, that. Yes, and that one's called. It's called. Uh, oh shoot. It's three words. Oh, I. Who goes there? Yeah. Who goes like there? there? Yeah. Something like that. I'm forgetting exactly, and but yeah, that's it's originally based on a novel, and even then, I think this movie was originally made in 1951, and it was a film called The Thing from Another World or mm-hmm. something like that, yeah. And I don't know anything about those. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a tried and true adaptation of those, or if it's uh-huh. its own universe type thing. Yeah. You know, I, you know what I have to say immediately about this movie is, I think... When we were talking about 13 Ghosts last time, mm-hmm. um, I had mentioned that that was like a movie. Or was it 13 Ghosts? There was a there was a film we just recently watched where I had said that like I felt like this was a movie that like I would see at my Uncle Jimmy's house. And uh, I think you were talking about Alien. I was think it, it might have been Alien. Probably, maybe. Um, but it. This I think this movie falls in that same category <laughs> of like being like this like obscure like eighties sci fi movie that like my uncle would probably have on at, at at his house sometime whenever I stayed the night and I just wouldn't know what was happening. Mm-hmm. But I watch it and I'm like, I feel like this is his movie, like that he would just have on at his house. And um yeah, I I, I have to say I really enjoyed it and I'm I'm excited to talk about it. This yeah. is also my first John Carpenter film. Really? Like I've never watched any of his other movies, which I know is a a crime. Oh what yeah, the, what other like movies that he has. Done every single Halloween. Yeah, he's done. He started a Halloween franchise with Michael Myers. Up until this point, I think there's 13 movies. Yeah, I don't know if he's directed all of them or I been a part of all of he them. He hasn't directed all of them. Yeah, but he, but he started them. And now there's 13 of them. Yeah, so it's crazy. He, he's done the thing. He's done a movie called They Live. Um, he's done a couple other movies that I know like are are widely loved by a big group of people. Well, yeah. He also does a lot of like music, I believe as well too. Mm. Like, um, he's a, a pretty big figure and just the horror genre in general. So he I'm did the fog. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. The old one, the, the old one. one and the new one. It says on here. Okay. We wrote the screenplay. Okay. It says fog, but yeah, I'm excited to, you know, have finally checked one of his movies off the list and it just makes me want to watch Halloween more, mm-hmm. the original. So, I am excited to talk about it. Yeah. So I messed up last week. I said it was on Peacock, but it's really Peacock Premium. Okay. So you have to pay for a subscription to watch it. It's there. Um, I, su- I suggest you do. It's awesome. We're going to be getting into spoilers, so if you don't want any of those, pause it, go watch it, yeah. we'll come back to it, um, and we'll get started with a little synopsis. Yes. Uh, this movie is based on a... What is it? It's not a not a Norwegian camp, but it's a U.S. based camp. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a, just a research team. Yeah, it's a research team that is in Antarctica, literally cut off from all communications with the outside world. There's a blizzard coming in, and it's gonna you know keep them hunkered down. And a Norwegian camp across the way, wherever it's at, has an incident and sends a dog to this research facility. And um, this dog is not just a dog. <laughs> it's a lot more than just a dog, but the crew doesn't know. Uh, what this dog really is is a alien yes. that is able to assimilate or to um, like dissolve you and then become you. Yes. Uh, and the whole film focuses on these guys trying to survive the thing and trying to figure out which crewmate is the thing and what they have to do to get out of there and survive. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about it. Yeah, it's a wild ride. It's an incredibly wild ride. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. It's it's definitely a fun one, and it's one of those movies that you're just, I don't know about you guys, but I'm hooked the yeah. entire time. I wasn't able to look away from the screen. Uh-uh. Like, I, the entire time I'm watching, I'm just like, who could it be? Like, it, 
it really grips you. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, so. it grips me from my first favorite scene, which is the introduction. This, it starts off with like this uh, droning soundtrack that's going, dum, dum. And I love it. I yeah. <laughs> like. I love it. That's the one thing that sticks throughout the film, and it just brings this like eerie ten- tension and tone. Yeah. And it's this helicopter that is taking shots at a dog, just yeah. running through the snow. Yeah. And immediately you're like, "Well, oh, I love the dog. Like, wh- yeah. Why are you shooting at this dog? What's happening?" Yeah. And you don't know. You know it's like completely ambiguous of, of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And the dog ends up getting to camp after these these guys have been throwing grenades out the helicopter. Yeah. And they come and the dog gets in and everyone is like, what the heck is this helicopter doing? We got to protect ourselves. So they get out there and they're Norwegian. So they have this dialect con- uh, conflict. Language barrier. Yeah, language barrier. They don't know what he's saying. Yeah. And the dog runs through and they're like, we got to protect this dog. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's every human instinct, right? Yes. And the whole shootout scene, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, dude. When when the helicopter blows up. Yeah. It it shocked me because like you see homeboy go up with it. It looks yeah, like yeah because he goes and is like digging the snow out. Yeah, and when I seen that thing blow up, I was just like, "Holy c- dude!" I did not expect this mm-hmm. like from the jump. That's pretty insane. Did you expect the thing to be the dog? Not at all. No. From from jump, I was just like, well, because we get this whole like kind of like montage of them like trying to shoot this dog in the snow as it's running from, and they're from helicopter. Mm-hmm. So the entire time I'm like, are they hunting this thing? Like, are they like that Maybe bad? For like, like, yeah, meat or something. Are they like down bad for food? And like, they're just trying to hunt like anything and everything to try to survive. Yeah. Like, what's going on? I'm not sure. And one of the one of the other funny things too was, at, at first I thought the the people in the helicopter were our main characters. Oh, really? Yeah, because he has a I, the only re- listen. The only reason I know that this movie or anything about it is because of the target collectible section <laughs> and they have like a thing the thing kurt russell action figure mm-hmm. and i see that he has a beard like a big beard and so the first guy you see in the helicopter the shooting has this big beard and like this like ski mask on mm-hmm. like like balaclava type thing mm-hmm. and so i was like oh well, this must be him and they're like shooting at this dog up what are they doing i'm not entirely sure and then that's when we get the our the, actual yeah our actual main characters who are on this you know base this research base and come across this stuff and they're like what the heck is going on and yeah it, it's it's intriguing man like a, as soon as that dog runs up and like jumps on uh one of the guys they're like what's going on here and then the norwegian guy is like yelling these things they don't understand what he's saying and then he just starts shooting and you're he has like a guy on the leg yeah you're like Weird. what the, kill this guy dude like what the heck is going on All right. and then you eventually get gets popped the hollow the the hollow the helicopter blows up <laughs> he he straight up goes <laughs> yeah, <laughs> slips yeah. Out and, of he, and he tries to <laughs> bury it up with the snow i was <laughs> like dude that? you think that's gonna stop it dude like yeah no, i yeah. laughed so hard when it like slipped out yeah it's like <laughs> yeah it was yeah it was it was insane it but was the, insane but the entire time through that the entire intro i'm just like what what's happening here like wh- okay there's two obviously two different you know sides here there's you know the norwegians and then the the americans whom we can understand they're chasing this dog now the dog's here and now we're introduced to these guys and what they're doing and Mm -hmm. yeah it it was it was interesting yeah another thing i liked about this introduction scene is we get like very brief uh scenes of characterization for the, the characters there's what 12 of them at this camp yeah something it was around 12 and That's quite a bit. We're going to, I mean, I'm going to forget some of the names here, but there are some distinct characters and they, they give you very brief, simple character traits that we can be like, oh, okay, this guy's this, this guy's yeah. that. Like the, I'm immediately thinking of the guy with the gun. Oh, okay. And he guy. looks like the, Gary. Gary, he looks like the sheriff, they call right? El Capitan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can see uh, McReady, which is Kurt Russell. He is playing a chess. And freaking drinking, Dude, it just drinking scotch. And then pours it down. Dude, so that he, was such yeah. a bro moment for me. It was too. Me too. Yeah, as soon as I saw that, yeah. I was like he called the he called the computer a cheater. Uh, I was just and then he goes and well, it, fries it. I was immediately like it was a bro moment because you're in Antarctica. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere. Right. That's your maybe one of your only sources of entertainment. Yeah. And Other than gonna, like reruns of a show. Yeah. Right. But it shows you that he's 
he's drinker yeah. and then he's also aggressive he's yes. uh, he's angry he's brash he's he's a he's a manly macho guy he's a yes. macho you man. get that from just that small scene yeah and then you get the other guys that smoke all the time you get the guy who's rollerblading i love that guy <laughs> Nalls. yeah I think Nalls. Was, dude he was smooth with it <laughs> like it's just whipping through the some of the things on the on the roller skates and yeah. listening to stevie wonder like uh, he was sick i, I know him. they straight up tell him turn that music down and he goes he goes okay i'm turning it down and then just walks he away. Doesn't do and, crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I just think it's really successful at getting you connected to these characters, albeit a simple way, but you mm-hmm. still are like, okay, there's 12 of them. I might not necessarily know their names, but yeah. whenever I see this guy, he's the sheriff guy. He's got the gun. Yeah. And when I see this guy, he's the chill, laid back guy that smokes all the time. Yeah. If I see this guy, he's the one at the comms table going, yeah. Oh, windows. Anyone there? Yeah, windows. Yeah. So you know what I mean? They, they, it's really effective at getting you oh. introduced to these characters. Yeah. Windows, you know, like the uh, computer. Yeah, oh. Mac. Mac. McCready, really? they call him Mac. That's all I got. Child? Mac, Mac Windows. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I have to say I really they call him Windows because of his glasses. Yeah, yeah. But I have to say I really like him as a character too. Like immediately when he's at the comms table, they're like, "Hey, we got to report this. Tell somebody." And he's like, "We're I like, we're fifty thousand miles away. Like, you think anybody's gonna listen to us? I can't like, do. Crap. I can't do anything right now, man. Yeah. Like, he's like, you don't think if I could reach somebody right now, I would have? Like, yeah. yeah. It was he did. They just they they make all these characters feel so grounded, like immediately mm-hmm. and feel like like real and like genuine like i couldn't tell you if that was if that wasn't my first immediate thought if somebody came up to me and was like hey have you reported this yet i don't but like we're in antarctica bro like, like mm-hmm. of course you think you think I'm, i haven't been trying yeah like come on give me some give me some some trust here mm-hmm. you know yeah i definitely agree I, I at least cut on some slack I mean. yeah how'd you guys feel about freaking el capitan getting a headshot on that guy bro he got he's he's got Dead eye, yeah. whatever. Um, oh, from Red Dead. From Red Dead, that's what yeah. he has. He's got dead shot daiquiri on. It's yeah, serious, you headshots only from zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think he's the only one with a like a true weapon, right? Oh, no, weapons. no, there are weapons. Yeah, yeah. There, there are weapons, but he's the first one that we see with he, the only he weapon. Like, he gets, you know, it's like from the eighties because he gets his gun and he like breaks through the glass. Yeah, and the way looks, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it looks kind of like cheesy. Yeah. But it, it gives it that little character, a little bit of flair to it. Yeah. Um, that I, I enjoyed. Definitely. But th- I think there's just a really effective introduction. Yeah. yeah it, I liked it a lot. I also liked it a lot because it, we get introduced, introduced to the soundtrack mm-hmm. as well. And boom, it's boom. so, like, uneasy. Yeah. Is the word I want to use, I think. Mm-hmm. Because, again, you get, like, like, you're chasing the dog and the helicopter. And then you hear the soundtrack in the back. And I'm just like, Bro, what is happening? Mm-hmm. And that's why I liked it because I already you don't feel well with the whatever's happening, and I just want to know what's gonna happen next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost like like and it follows how the soundtrack paired really well. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt with this. You know, I think of that like droning noise that stays throughout the entirety of the film. It almost think makes me think of like a movie like Jaws, mm. where you have just this 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 freaking. It's so simple. And y- exactly, it's so simple, but it builds tension and it gives you that that ominous feeling of like I'm being watched. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. something here that wants to hurt me or do me harm. Yeah, and it's something as simple as don't 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 don't. Like dude, it's so good. It's it's awesome. Yeah, and I, I love it. It kind of blows my mind that uh, when when this movie came out, there's a there's a notorious uh, award show called the Razzies, mm-hmm. and the Razzies are a film. The reward, they're an award that you don't want to get. Yeah, they're like, like it's <laughs> like the worst of the worst <laughs> for the year. And this movie's score got nominated for a Razzie that year, which kind of blows my mind. Yeah, it blows my mind. Too. And even even to find out too that it was done by uh, a prolific composer like Ennio Morricone. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. I think he, I believe he passed away this year, if I'm not mistaken. But like a guy that did an, uh, such an iconic score with like the good, the bad, and the ugly, and tons of great westerns and stuff like that. And for him to like be attached to this, and then someone to be like, "Oh yeah, your score is trash." Ooh. That's awful. Yeah, I I, I just can't agree. Yeah, I just me think either. it's great, man. Yeah, it, me too. It gives you so much. Like, it does so much like with a, so little. Yeah, and it, I think that like when you really strip something down to like the the basics, you can do so much with very little. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's a matter of knowing where that line is. Yeah. And uh, I think they, they they play on the line perfectly. Yeah. It's like the subtlety 
You know what I mean? It's the subtlety that you don't you don't know if you notice it, but when it's there, you're like, mm, it's it's here. Yeah. Like I I think about it, about it like a bay leaf. Yeah. You you put a bay leaf in your rice and you don't think like you don't really you don't think, think it's, it's gonna add anything. Yeah, you and then you eat it and you're like, oh, this is actually really and good. You're like, there's it's there's something there. Yeah. And it it makes it like a well rounded meal. And I think that's what the soundtrack does. It's you can have these great characters and all that, but that droningness about it, that's really what like anchors you into that that tension. Yeah. Which freaking loved it. Can't Definitely. talk enough about it. But that's an I that's all I've got for the favorite scene for my introduction. Okay. Mm. My next favorite scene is finding the thing. When we see it from the dog. Oh, okay, so when the dog goes into the kennel. When the dog goes into the oh, kennel. Dude. This is mine as well. This is insane. This is insane. Immediately, we were talking about it before we recorded. Um, I forget who says it, but they're like, put that dog back in the kennel with the other dogs. And immediately, you could tell something's off with this dog. It sits down, and it's just staring into the distance. Yeah. Not not acknowledging anything else. Well, even before then, it's it's... It's very hesitant to go in. Yes. Yeah. It's like stalking. Yeah, it's staying there. And he's like, come on, come on, boy. And finally gets in. And as soon as it gets in, it just like turns into the, like the loaf of bread, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. just stay, like stays there and is just staring. Yeah. And you're just like, what the heck? Something's off with this dog. And then goes away and then you just start hearing something. Just, some noises. I don't. I don't want to recreate them. Uh, it's loud. It's yeah. loud, and <laughs> it's and you just see some like tentacles yeah. come out, and then it's just, like little squiggly, like almost like pool noodles, but they're spaghetti noodles. Excuse me. Okay. That's super thin and like going, and then the face splits. Yeah, it Dude, turns into like it like. If I can make any reference, like Demogorgon, like, yeah, it does almost look like, yeah. like like a little like <laughs> flowers, yeah. almost yeah. you know, and then like it's got its skull that like is. There and then even the skull like retracts in and it, it's wild looking, it's dude. Wild looking, like you said, and you're like, what in the world is happening? Like, is this the thing? And then obviously, obviously, of course, it is the thing. Yeah. And it starts to attack the other dogs, and then finally somebody else shows up. Um, and I believe his name is um. It's uh, Clark. Benning? Clark is. Is it the, Clark or Benny? Clark is the guy that cares for the dogs, like the the guy in the plaid shirt. Yeah, that's his like character trait. He likes yeah. the dogs more yeah. than the yeah. humans. <laughs> yeah. So he shows up and then opens the gate for the dogs, and this is where actually I first got scared. Mm. I, the dogs run out of the kennel and I jump because they just showed up out of nowhere. Dude, I don't <laughs> know, did you notice that one dog like biting the chain link off? Yeah. yeah. Dude, dude, I was <laughs> rooting for homeboy. I was, was like, trying to get I out. I was like, get out, get out. Dude, <laughs> I saw like, that. I was like, this dog is desperate yeah. as heck he's to trying get out to, of there. Trying dude. to claw his way out. I died laughing at that. Yeah. He, I think he's the one that gets chomped up by the thing. Oh, the, yeah. no. Oh, it kind of made me feel bad too because in this scene, it starts to like squirt some, something. It's yeah. either like it's I think it's like the digestive fluids or whatever. Mm. And it looks, I think they actually like squirt something at the dog. Yeah, they do. Cause it straight up goes <laughs> and like goes away. Yeah. It looks, it looks like you're harming it a yeah. little bit. Uh, and I felt really bad at this. I was like, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Like they're really practical yeah. on this scene right here. Yeah. You gotta um, do what you gotta do. Man, I, I love this scene a lot too, because one, it's practical. Yes. So you've got the real physical, tangible thing transforming and doing this weird contortion stuff. Yes. And the the camera lets you see it. Yeah. The camera literally like lets you watch this thing transform. Yes. Which I enjoyed so much. Yeah. Because I really like you know you think about a movie in the 1980s, you think, okay, what can you do to? It would be so easy to like make the cu- budget smaller. Exactly. It would be so easy to like cut away and show like a shadow of it, like transforming or something. You but know, no, this movie doesn't shy away from it. No. And I, I have to say, I think it's it, it it adds so much to the film, like the goriness of it, mm-hmm. and you know, just it shows you exactly what this thing is. It's inhuman. Mm-hmm. It is not of this world, and it destroys everything in its path. Yeah. And whenever it's ready to reveal what its true form is, it's going to be nasty. Yeah. Like, and it shows you that it's dangerous. Yeah. I mean, this is something you don't want to be alone with. Exactly. That's why it was like. Oh, this is sick. That's why I kind of need to see the gore. Exactly. Because it's like, oh man, this is like gruesome. And, but it's also kind of like, I don't want to say beautiful in our traditional sense, but it's like, man, they like, it's so detailed. It's yeah, so it's intricately designed. Creative. So it's like, it's almost beautiful how they designed it. Cause it's yeah. like, who, uh, how would you think about like little noodles coming out and then freaking spider legs yeah. retracting out? 
like it's just, it's so uh thoughtful yeah in 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 a gruesome way yeah which and they, they don't stop here too which is what i love yeah this same. is like just the little taste exactly. of a dog transforming into i guess what seems to be other dogs yeah um and then even when it gets more to the, like them trying to assimilate humans yeah is, is just wild yeah i love it man yeah i also have to say gotta be the greatest dog actor of all time <laughs> <laughs> like it, from this scene like even to the ones previous where the where the dog is on screen mm-hmm. like it i need a dog that's trained that well like it's insane it walks like it's not a dog man. yeah it walks it, like it's the thing exactly and if there was ever like a oscars for greatest pet actor of all time boom, <laughs> going to him <laughs> like what? yeah seriously oh man um, my next one isn't a little further, isn't until a, fur- a little further into the film. So, if you guys get anything after the dog, my next one is finding the ship. The one that's encapsulated in ice. Yes, that big old hole. Yeah, the big crater. Yeah. Okay, go for it. So, I, it's very minuscule and it's very small for me, but it's I see this thing, the ship. I don't know. I've, I'm assuming it's a ship or whatever it is, um, because in the beginning of the movie we see like. Um, something go in to Earth. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, I totally forgot that's how it started. Yeah, yeah. it starts off with seeing like a UFO. Yeah, just like, like a UFO crash. So I'm yeah. only assuming that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you just see the scale of it. It almost looks like it's the Grand Canyon, and it's just huge. And then you you finally see these two people just climbing down, but then it zooms out, and then you just see like two little specks, and then the ship in the middle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Holy cow, this thing is huge!" Yes, and that's why I liked it. I was it just it made me awe. Like it, seeing it, just I was in awe of it. Yeah, and that's one of the things I really loved about this film too was that it, it in in the in the intro of the film, I think it's like the only part where there is maybe some CGI used yeah. in, at that era when they're trying to show the the spaceship. Mm-hmm. But throughout the rest of the film, everything else is practical. And even when it comes to showing this, you know, huge cratered in spaceship that's like, you know, destroyed all the ice and it's been under there for 100,000 years, they say, it looks like like a trick of perception. And it looks like, you know, this thing was painted and is shot in a way where like the camera is positioned in a certain way or the, or the, the painting or the backdrop is painted in a certain way where if you get it at the right camera angle, it looks massive. Mm-hmm. And then you get like your guys over here and you, and you get them by the camera and you know, you can make things, you can trick your perception into thinking that things are way bigger with a camera than they really are. Yeah. Like I think of the same thing, like they did the same thing with Lord of the Rings and like the way to like get the way the hobbits look and how small they look versus like, you know, somebody like Gandalf or any of those other dudes, you know, they look huge compared to the hobbits, Mm -hmm. but in all reality, it's just a trick of the camera and like having your perspective change and having like one guy stand right here real close to the camera. And then the other guy be like super Super, far away, you know, and it's super simple little tricks like that that Mm -hmm. make things work. Yeah. Yeah. And this scene is uh, a scene that ties in an earlier scene when they go to the Norwegian camp and they see, there's the utter destruction that happens. They get to see that one guy on the thing like completely ripped apart. Yeah. yeah. And it's I think it's at this moment it's it's McCready and it's McCready, McCready and, and uh, uh, the Doc Blair. And, yeah, and one of no, the I don't other think guys. Blair goes. Is he Does not Blair there? go? No, it's the actual doctor. When when it, whenever he goes to defibrillate the guy, that yeah, guy. it's the actual doctor. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one of the other guys, I forget. Okay, but they they're going through this camp and it's all destroyed, and you get to see this weird ice block, mm-hmm. and you don't think anything of it until we get to this ship scene where he goes and he calls him over, and you see this cut out block of ice. Yes. And you can only assume that the thing was that's where it was frozen there, yeah. and it dethawed at the camp and got loose. Yeah. Um. I have to say, too, cool. in regards to that scene, seeing all, like, the carnage of everything, yeah. it was a bra moment seeing whenever they go up to that guy who's just, like, frozen there and been torn up. It was a bra moment for me seeing his blood frozen. Yeah. Like, like it's, like, icicled. Off. It's pulled off into it his arm, but, it, but it's frozen now. And so, like, it's mixed in with all of this, like, new fresh snow that's been piled on top of him. And then you see this red, like, icicles hanging from this guy's arms. You're, like, and this freaking massive, like, neck 
gash that this yeah. guy has. Like, yeah, a, isn't it like a clean chop right through there? Yeah, well, it, it looked like he almost did it himself. Yeah, because yeah. it, it, it was he was holding almost a like a scalpel. Yeah, like a, a ra- like yeah. a straight edge razor, like in one hand. In one hand. Yeah, it was just insane. Like the attention to detail. Mm-hmm. Like I. You would think, right? Like you're in Antarctica, obviously everything's gonna freeze. But adding that little detail of like the blood freezing, yeah, is just so sad. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's easy to forget about. Oh, they're literally in like freezing temperatures. Exactly. But this movie is like, no. Every time they take a breath, you see the smoke come out. Yeah. Like it's absolutely freezing cold here. Yeah. And they don't let you forget that. Definitely. Um, my next one is that scene where he goes to defib the guy. Oh, okay. So if you have anything before that. My my last favorite scene is the testing the blood scene, which okay, I, think I think is after. I, think, I, th- yeah, I believe that is after. Okay. Well, they they I have one up, after yours, and then yours is right after mine. Okay. So they get back to the camp, and they're slowly figuring out what the thing is and how it like they um I think after they burn the dog, the doctor Blair he dissects it. He does a biopsy, and he like is cutting through like the stomach and. Like yeah, he's pulling out the, goop the, the organs, all that stuff. But what he's realizing is that these they're just re- like fine organs. They're all good, but they're in this amalgamation of just meat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but they're real. They're real. <laughs> yeah. And then you get that weird like camera or uh, it's like an old school computer diagram of the little cell. Yeah. Consuming. Assimilating. Everything. Yeah. Assimilating one of the things. And you're immediately like, okay, this is, it's like a chameleon. Yeah. It'll, it'll eat you and then transform into you. So we're getting all this background, all this lore for the the thing, and it's one we don't know exactly know where the thing is or what the thing is. And then the guy, I forget his name, but he's the guy with the blondish hair. Yeah, I'm blanking on his. There's name so as well. many people. There's a lot of people. There's movie. so many people, but it's this guy. He, he you can kind of see something's weird with him because he he kind of goes, oh, Norris. Yeah. I think it, is that his name, Norris. I'm trying. To, I'm just looking at the. Cast right now, and you said blonde hair. So the only one that it has because so much blonde hair is Norris. A little bit of an older guy. Or yeah. Palmer. No, it's not Palmer. No, Palmer, I think it's I Norris. It has to be Norris. Yeah. Well, anyways, there. I think uh, McGreedy and Knowles go out to his cabin because someone left the light on. He didn't leave it on. Yeah. And Knowles pretty much cuts McGreedy off. He said, "I think he's the thing." Yeah. So we're we're left him. So he they're doing his thing. He's getting back in, and I think that what, is that might be later. No, no, you're, you're still you're still good because there, there's still like quite a bit of people at, on the camp at this point. Right, I I think it's because he breaks in and like pushes Nulls or uh, pushes what was his name? We Norris. Just, Norris. Norris. And Norris is like having a heart attack. Yeah. Right. So they put him onto the the thing, and the doctor goes to defib him, and right as he does it, the stomach, stomach goes, goes and, and eats him, yeah. rips his hands off. Yeah. And immediately I was like. What? Yeah. I did not expect this at all. Yeah. And the physicality of it was awesome, dude. Yeah, seeing him pull back and he's got freaking stumps now. They're all bleeding. Yeah. And he's just, ah. Yeah. And it's, the, the the transformation of this thing on this like work table. Yeah. It's, it's insane. insane. The head that comes out, dude, looking like, <laughs> a, like a centipede. Yeah. And it's all deformed. Yeah. I, it's so cool. Yeah. I'm so glad that we got this. Yeah. Rather I, than it's just being like, a stupid little transformation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this I thing will it. make you like if you're sick. To, if you're like light stomach, I could see someone kind of getting like. Yeah, I could oh. see someone puke. I could see it, especially when he's getting burned and his he's like ripping his oh his own head off for survival. Yeah. I was like, ugh. Yeah. I, th- it's actually funny you bring that up too. Some of the special effects that were used at this time, they even made some of the cast like sick. To their stomachs, yeah. like seeing it. I in can person, imagine seeing it in person, and whenever like it gets all done up with all the blood and the and the the slime and all that stuff, and making it all look real, some of the guys got pretty queasy stomachs after. I feel I like don't if blame I were them. to witness something like that, like even if it's still practical effects, I would probably get queasy. Yeah, yeah. But it's still hard to. I mean, that's like a human just ripping his own head off. Yeah, <laughs> and of then turning into a little spider. Yeah, that's and creepy. They, yeah, and and waddling away, and then they <laughs> freaking light the thing on fire, and it's all like st- dancing around. Oh, the but fire. like when it comes yeah. off and it's using its tentacle to like drag its head, dude. And yeah. the head is like upside down. One of the things that I was really amazed by by that is like the use of like it has to be like puppeteering or like early animatronics or something yeah, like that yeah. because like the way that they make this face like contort and everything like mm-hmm. it looks so natural. It like elongates. Yeah, and it's like. 
uh, you see him like moving his mouth up and down yeah. and stuff and everything. And like, it's like, he's kind of like, you know, have you ever like inchwormed on the floor? Yeah. You, know, like, you don't use your arms or legs. You got, you, like, you got to use, use your face, right? <laughs> like the, like the thing is trying to use its face to like move around and it can't do it. And then eventually, you know, pulls this little tentacle thing out and then sprouts those little spider arms yeah. and starts walking away. Yeah. It, it really did remind me of alien and the scene where you're fighting the, the cyborg dude. Yeah. Cause you get that like, you know, when his head gets pulled apart, you see just the green. Yeah. It's no longer human. It's like a a bunch of green noodles. Yeah. Like spewing out of there. And you're just, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It, but it was beautiful. Like I loved seeing this. Yeah. Same. Yeah. My next favorite scene is Blair when he goes crazy and he's destroying everything. Oh, he starts smashing all the stuff. And I like this specifically because he's, he's like the researcher or whatever. Yeah. And he, I think he goes crazy because he knows what's going to go on. Hmm. And well, there's a similar scene. I mean, I, I'm still harking back to Alien when they're in the chance of survival, yeah. zero percent. He yeah. gets he gets that same thing where it's like seventy five percent, yeah, a uh, probability survival that one or more is not gonna, not it's not looking good, or yeah. or that one or more have already been infected. Yeah. yeah. So he goes crazy. He goes. I was I almost said something bad. <laughs> he he goes crazy and just starts destroying everything and just like any anybody who comes in his way, he was gonna. He's gonna hurt you. He'll shoot you. I died laughing when he shoots and runs out of the bolt and throws the gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, "Like that's gonna do anything?" Yeah. But yeah. I I like to think that he goes crazy because he knows what's gonna go on, mm-hmm. and he's just he's like, "That's the end of his life. Like I'm yeah. gonna die." Yeah. So I so I just liked it because it's just a little bit more tension added to this. Plus the thing, yeah, just makes this movie even more interesting. Yeah, and it's the, it's the breakdown of trust in this group. I mean, that's the real terror here is that not only is there the thing, but it's like you can't even trust your person next to you. Yeah, exactly. there's twelve guys here, but it could be anyone. Mm-hmm. So when you get to see your your main guy, your doctor, I mean, this is the guy that's literally been describing the thing to them. Yeah, and now that he's like, oh, at first he was he was locking the door and nobody could get to him. And now people are worried about what's happening here. So now he, and then now we get to see him like breaking all of the equipment. And now the, uh, the helicopter, all of the controls have been ripped up. So is the tractor. So they're pretty much stuck there. Yeah. And now you're just questioning like, what the heck? Who is it? (laughs) There's so many people that it could be because you, you know, the camera's not following everyone. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a great scene in, in just destroying the trust that you've built. Yeah, definitely. Um, but my next one is the blood scene. The testing yeah, of the blood. Yeah, the testing of the blood this is, is cool. I, man, like, talk about a scene where I'm holding my breath. Mm-hmm. Like, I was felt like walking around on pins and needles, like, watching this thing. And just the, the sheer stress of everything was just eating me alive. And I loved it. Yeah. And um, it essentially gets to a point where, um, at that point, they locked Blair up in, like, a... Uh, a tower somewhere like oh, there, there was a the tool shed. Yeah. yeah they shed. locked him up in a tool shed that locks from the outside. So that way he can, you know, stay there and cool down whatever he needs to do. And then, um, they get a couple other people into like, their like rec room essentially. And they're basically like, all right, look, look basically we're going to tie everybody up. We're going to take blood samples. And my theory is, or McCready's theory is that if this thing, you know, does not want to be caught, then, you know, it, it will do what it needs to do to, to survive. Mm-hmm. And it, that means that if I like, you know, I'm able to like touch some hot copper wire to it, that it will like avoid being hurt or being, you know, it'll try its best to survive. And right. it yeah. Will, it'll and disguise you know, itself as blood. But if, if you try to hurt it, it's going to, it's going to defend itself or, defend or try itself. to, you try yeah. to fight or flight. Right. And, um, so immediately I'm like, okay, let's see if this even works. Like, I don't even like, yeah, I this could just be a I shot didn't. in the dark. Like yeah. I, it, I'm telling you when I, th- when this movie threw me for a loop the entire time, I was like thinking like, I have no idea where this could go. Like it could either be a fluke. It could be that this guy's the thing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, or one of them is really the thing. Like I have no clue. Yeah. And so I'm sitting here just, it, it just not wanting to look away from the screen. And like the entire time, you know, McCree's just looking at everybody heating up that copper wire with the flamethrower and testing everyone's blood. And like everyone is just like, you know, just smokes a little bit. And there's even points too where like, I think windows, like he, he starts to do his and he's like, all right, we're going to test you. I know I'm not it, but yeah. let's get you. And like windows even gives you a look of like, Oh shoot. shoot! I hope it's not me. Like, that what? Get, if, what if it is me? I have no clue. Mm-hmm. And like, he you know, starts to test him, and as soon as he does, he's just like, 
oh, thank like God. Like a sigh like, of relief. Like, <laughs> thank God it's not me, man. And, like, yeah. you know, kind of backs away a little bit and starts to do it to everybody else. And eventually we get Gary El Capitan, who, like, Dude. starts getting mad. <laughs> and he's like, this is ridiculous that you think this is even going to work and stuff. And pre- in a previous scene, we'd find it out. We'd found out that they tried to do this or tried to, like, see if they could mix, you know, untainted blood with tainted blood to see if it had any sort of reaction but the blood bags were previously sabotage. tampered with they were sabotaged and the only person that had a key at the time was gary and so you know he starts to get pissed off and thinking that this thing's not going to work and mccready looks at him and says like you were the only one to have a key to those blood bags and you you know that just for that we're gonna make sure that you go last mm-hmm. and so you know, they test a couple other people's. Everyone else is good. And then as soon as they go to test Palmer's, it's funny. I rewatched this scene today at work. And right as they're about to test Palmer's or they're about to grab it, it gives you a shot of him. And he gives this kind of like smirk. I, you caught me. Yeah. And it kind of was like it almost gave this feeling of kind of like a, well, here goes nothing. Let's give him a show, you mm-hmm. know, type thing. And as soon as he touches that blood sample of Palmer, you see this just like creature just pop out and she goes and drops it immediately. It's like a jump scare kind of deal. Yeah. And it got me, man. Cause the entire time I'm, I'm glued. And as soon as I hear that, it was all <laughs> jumped hard. And then all of a sudden you see Palmer just start just shaking and transforming. And oh, he dude. looks crazy. Yeah. Like he, you know, face starts distorting and blood is just pouring from every scene and keep in mind too these guys are all tied up on like a three-seater like right couch to, yeah so like there are two innocent people that are transforming that's right next to this transforming you know alien that's gonna kill people <laughs> and they're just like ah, ah, just <laughs> like, dude, like, I'm crap crazy. i'd be pooping my pants dude. yeah so the entire time i'm like dude these guys are gonna die like yeah. They're, they have no they have no escape. They're stuck. They got tied to cut like to the couch. And they're <laughs> crying for their lives. And then this guy's just freaking out and eventually like you know, goes on some like exorcist stuff and like flies to Dude. the top of the ceiling and you know, falls down and then kills windows and like chomps on his head and yeah. starts like absorbing him and flopping him all around all over the like room. Tell me you weren't laughing the way he was flopping the body though. I was laughing, but then the entire time too, I'm sc- I'm like stressed because there's other people Mac- in the Mac- room. Well, yeah, other people are in the room, and then McCready he's trying to start the flame Dude, floor, the that it's made not me working. mad so and it's, much, go, poof, poof, and it's not working. Yeah. Cause, oh, you can literally hear you just go. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not even coming out. I'm like, bro, come on, you know you have it. Yeah, yeah. and the entire time, it, it's that <laughs> feeling of hopelessness in that scene where you're like, "There's nothing I can do. This thing <laughs> is just gonna ravage this room." Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, I loved everything about this scene. It's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, even even in when like uh, going out, like they blow that thing up. They, like they like set it on fire, then it like ends up out. running out, and they toss a stick of dynamite at the thing. It blows up. <laughs> like it's. Insane, man. I mean, it's funny. At this point, you gotta do whatever you can to survive. Yeah, Yeah. we're just trying to survive. That's true, man. I yeah. My next one is just the the ending. The ending is like mine is like yeah. I guess the ending is when they blow up the thing and then the end as well. Yeah. So they, I can't remember. There's like four guys left after that whole scene. They end up understanding that their only option, pretty much, is to uh, to burn. To burn the entire facility down. Right. So they get all these Molotovs and they're throwing it and burning all the built like they're running through, just completely destroying this place. And they end up um pretty much blowing it all up, but they go to Blair to go and get Blair and what yeah. they realize is that he's gone. The door is open. Yep. And they're like, Well, what the heck it's locked? And they fill the floorboards and of course there's a hidden entrance or a yes. hidden exit and they go down there and you they see this like recreation of like a spaceship or like a yeah i don't know it's either a spaceship or like i had seen some people describe it as like a hover ship thing okay like a pod so they could get to better climate conditions so it can do what it does best Mm. um and they see that they're like what the heck and i think this is also too where they they realize that all the lights have turned off yeah and they have to go to the generator to see if we can get it fixed because in 10 hours they're all going to freeze because there's no heat yeah so they go down to the generator and they're they don't know where Blair is at all. Mm-hmm. And they, they're they all... I think they're loading a stick of dynamite. They're loading dynamite, aren't they? Yes. And 
Who goes off by themselves like an idiot? Gary. Gary does. Yeah. He freaking goes off, and it's this very, it's not a jump scare, but it's a very, like, <laughs> Blair, like, slides in. Yeah. No, that's a jump scare. Are you kidding you, me? It was it? That's where I jumped. It I, well, it's not your traditional jump scare. Where no, it's, like, it's not your traditional wee, wee, jump scare. Wee, 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 wee. But it's yeah. a jump scare if you're not if you're not anticipating it. Literally, I'm sitting on my on my bed watching it, and he comes out of nowhere, and I go, "Oh shoot!" The same way when the dog comes out of the kennel, mm. that's how bad I jumped. No, what so what got me is he just puts his hand on his face, and you think like, "Okay, he's trying to shut him up." But the scene it cuts to after that, his hand is like merging yeah, into, into his, his face. Skin. Into his skin, and I'm immediately like, "Oh God!" The, the thing that got me was when he's dragging him away, and it's like, and connect- you see him like connected to his head, yeah. like his arm is just like become one with his head, and he's dragging his whole body. <laughs> yeah, it feels. I'm t- I'm telling you, HR Geiger, it feels yeah. intimate. It feels like I don't know why it feels like that, but it feels like a, that he- a face hugger. Yeah, and it just got me like, oh, I don't like the way he's merging already into it. It was yeah. so creepy, dude. Yeah. And it was the ca- El Capitan. He he was trustworthy. Yeah. So to see him go like that was pretty sad. Yeah, I have to say too at the ending, I, we were talking about this a little bit before, but the the whole the the emergence of the thing at the end, whenever it like bursts through the floorboards, yes. that was something that genuinely scared me. Was that you know the camera? First off, I gotta say the editing to this film, phenomenal, spot it's, on. It's phenomenal. Like John Carpenter has. Su- like knows like the length of time to linger on a shot, Mm -hmm. how to build suspense and when to like introduce something or cut or something like that, as well as the editor of this film. Like they know the exact, like they know how to, how to, how to capture an audience. And it's something that goes severely under the radar. And I think of this scene specifically whenever, you know, the camera pans over to this like room with all this, just this like clutter and um, debris and stuff. And there's this like box and my immediate thought was that like somebody would like appear from the box or come out from behind it or something like that. And you know, it would just be Blair and they'd be yeah. like, Oh, where have you been the whole time? And you know, it stays there for a minute and you know, I'm looking at this shot and I'm like, what is happening? What's going to come out of anywhere? I'm not sure. And then all of a sudden, like everything just like, bumps. like, a shock like wave. yeah, it's like a shockwave. And then you see almost like a shark, like ripping through the water. All these floorboards are just going, and like are getting taken out and this thing is under the floorboards and it's just wreaking havoc on all this debris and flies all the way up to where they're at and bursts out of the room and it still has like the face of of blair on the side but it's got like it looks like like a t-rex on the other side of its face and it's all distorted it looks like something of like dead space yeah i said i'd seen someone say i don't know if uh john carpenter is still alive is he still alive yeah Someone who said, John Carpenter's still alive. Let's get a Dead Space game. Let's yeah. get a Dead Space movie. Yeah. Like, it, it, it looks like something out of that game. Yeah. It's super sick. And just to see them just, you know, fight this thing one last time is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoyed this whole last scene. And it even ends with a, a question. It's kind of undefined uh, where the characters are left. Because yeah, because... Um, the only two childs is the only... Childs and McCready end up being the only ones left mm-hmm. alive. And, of course, Childs was... Nowhere to be seen. Yeah, he he goes off into the into the storm somewhere. Yeah, and, and it's it's almost ominous when they reconnect because, you know, McGreedy after all the fires happen, everything has happened. He's pretty much broken down, freezing, and really tired. So he's he sits down, and you know, McGreedy walks in, and immediately the tension's building right back up because you're like, oh crap, is Childs the thing? Like yeah. we don't know. He wasn't there. We don't know what, like what this thing is capable of. He walks in, and they start to say something. And he goes. Where were you? Where were you? Like exactly what I'm thinking. And of course, Childs. I don't know. They, I, I, because it's not very uh, believable. He goes, <laughs> "Oh, I saw him outside, so I went out there and I got lost." Yeah. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Come on. Whatever. But he ends up sitting down, and he's like, "You know, what? What can we do now? What are we gonna do?" And pretty much, they're accepting their fate. And he passes him a drink to drink, and and all that stuff. But it it, it leaves you with that burning question of is was McCready the thing the whole time or yeah. was Childs the thing or are they are neither of them the thing yeah and it, it really just leaves you to to believe what you want yeah which I really appreciated yeah because it just slowly fades with that dun, dun. 
dong, dong. Yeah. 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 I I loved it. The great it's, way to end it. Yeah. It's awesome. It leaves you too, like 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 you had said, just with so many questions and theories, and it lets your mind run wild. And I think that's why this movie has such a big cult following, is oh, yeah. because people just continue to talk about their love for the film and what they think happened. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's plenty of videos on YouTube being like at at the exact uh, chronological order each person was infected. Yeah. And it's like people go through and they're like, well, logically, if if he were to get infected here, it'd have to be then. And it wasn't on screen, but it was here. Like, yeah, there's yeah. so many people who are genuinely so interested in how this thing works. Yeah. Which I I, I find very valuable. Yeah. Same. Um, and it's not one of those cheap jump scare endings. Mm-hmm. It's no. more of just like, they are they done? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Oh. And it leaves you with that, like, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I yeah. want to know what happens to our characters. Exactly. Either they're gonna freeze, or one of them's gonna get eaten. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, with that being said, that's it for the favorite scenes. Let's get into some best quotes. Uh, I have to say, my first favorite quote of the film was some one I genuinely laughed at. It was whenever uh, McCready and the guys are going to that Norwegian camp, and previously. <laughs> Uh, previously to this, McCready has mistaken them for Swedish people, and um, he gets corrected and says like, "No, they're obviously Norwegian." You know, it says it says Norge on the side of their helicopter, and you know, they weren't speaking anything that we you know knew or anything like that. So I'm just gonna assume that it's Nor they're Norwegian or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they you know they finally get to this facility that they're at and they break in, and uh, McCready has like a shotgun uh, in hand and breaks down the door and he just goes. Hey, Sweden! And <laughs> I started laughing immediately because that, that's already been established. These are Norwegian guys. And then the guy that's with them is like, they're not Swedish, Mac. They're Norwegian. I told you this. <laughs> like, it's super funny. I laughed at it. Just a burly guy going in there. Yeah. That's funny. I have the uh, ending quote when they're talking. It's Childs and uh, McGreedy. And he goes, fire's got the temperature up all over camp. Won't last long. And McGreedy goes, neither will we. Child says, how will we make it? And McCready says, maybe we shouldn't. So I think that's kind of like him like jabbing at him. Like, maybe you shouldn't survive. Maybe you're the thing. Yeah. Which was cool. Yeah, I think what's even greater, too, about the rest of that quote, um, he eventually, I think, goes on to say, like, uh, I think he kind of, like, Kai's tries to again poke fun and, and be like, I don't know if it's really you or or if you're saying who you say you are or not. Um yeah, he says, uh, Child says, if you're worried about me, and the McCready cuts him off and says, if we've got any surprises for each other, I don't think we're in much shape to do anything about it. And then Child says, well, what do we do? McCready sa- and then McCready's last line says, why don't we just wait here for a little while and mm. see what happens? Mm. And then it you know, pans out mm-hmm. and uh, ends with that ominous score. Yeah. Love it. My only other favorite quote that I have is whenever they lock Blair up in that tool shed and um, Blair is talking about how, you know, nobody trusts him or anything like that. McCready hits him with the line. He says, trust is a tough thing to come by these days. Yeah. And as soon as I I heard that, I was just like, oh, that's a quote right there and wrote that thing down. So, <laughs> yeah. I didn't write any down. I'm not going to lie. I uh, lagged on that part. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into the bro moments then. Yeah, you must have a bunch of these ones. I have some, but we also talked about most of them. Yeah, we did. Okay. My um, first one, pouring drink down the chess master. Dude, machine. yeah, yeah pouring like drink on the computer. <laughs> yeah. This dude's a uh, reckless, man. Yeah. Um. My first one was trying to shoot the dog. I was just like... Okay. They're the worst shots in all yeah. of Norwegian Worse than history. Clone troopers. No. Bro, it's terrible. <laughs> try, try to shoot try to shoot something while moving. I could do it. I am I'm so confident in myself. I know I probably couldn't, but I feel like I could. They had so he, he at least loaded on two clip. Like two clips. Yeah. Unloaded if, two think, clips. I think he could have hit him if he did more fi- rapid fire. But he was just going gah, gah. But the dog oh. wasn't doing any kind of serpentine. No. It was running a straight line. It was slide canceling, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um The thing in general. The thing is just a bro moment because I didn't expect it to look like that. Okay. I didn't know what I was expecting when we get introduced to it. I didn't know mm. what exactly it was, how it was going to look like. And then seeing it, the whole movie, how it can change to whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It honestly is like kind of terrifying. Yeah. Um. So that was one of my biggest bro moments, which is 
seeing the thing finally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The only other one that I have that we have not talked about was finding out that um, there's a specific scene where Nalls comes in and says like, I don't know which one of you put your nasty dr- shredded drawers in the kitchen in the kitchen trash can, but those need to go in the personal trash can or something mm-hmm. like that. And he brings them out, and you know, it's like shredded clothing that just uh, just dirty randomly, drawers, randomly dude. appear. And um, we come to find out that whenever the whenever the thing takes over somebody, it shreds their clothing and then you know reassimilates back into the thing that they're trying to imitate. And so we see like random pieces of the clothing that just get ripped up like we at some point get a, a piece that says mccready on it and it's ripped up yeah and we start thinking oh, oh is he I the can. thing like or or is somebody trying to pin it on him like or something like that and it was the the realization that finding out that the shredded clothing around the around the camp is due to the thing taking somebody over mm-hmm. was just a big bro moment for me and, and and it made me think about that that's that scene where uh they find the the clothing those drawers in the in the kitchen and you know previously and even at that point i think like the the dog is still there like at some point and mm-hmm. yeah it's just crazy it makes it makes the mind race and you're like well how long has this thing like really been here like this is insane so yeah, yeah. my last one is when Basically, McCready got left to for dead out there in the, the snow. And when he gets back, he has this massive bundle of TNT. And he's like, if you try anything, I'll blow us all up. I'll dude. blow us all up. <laughs> <laughs> and when I saw that, I was like, bro, he's yeah. really like about to commit suicide right now. Yeah. Just, just to get back into uh, being a captain. Yeah. Which I thought was crazy. I think another huge bro moment now, I'm thinking about it just now, was... They they even say in the film that all of the the previous um, iterations of the thing aren't technically dead. Mm-hmm. They they had said that, so. They got like three of these things on autopsy tables. That they'd just been experimenting with, and they aren't fully dead. They're melting. So these things like still technically have the potential to like transform or or pass on like what they have to another thing to to imitate do something. Can, do you think they can combine to each other? That's what I was thinking. I was confused on if there was more than one. Is that's, there? That's what I was th- wondering too, because of the autopsy table thing. Like they had like the dog, and then they had the the thing that they carried back from the Norwegian camp. Yeah. And then I think they had a uh, homeboy, the the defibrillator guy, Norris, Already, uh, like yeah, Norris? on there. So there was like I believe three, three of them, three iterations. And I was wondering, like, because after they fully kill uh, Palmer. Whenever he turns into it, like it's done. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was wondering if it, you know it was able to take on different forms at different times. Mm-hmm. Do you think synopsis is my theory? Like, yeah, maybe there is multiple. What if at the end, because you know how at the the last the last iteration of the thing, it's huge, it's massive. Do you think they finally just got together and created that massive one? It's, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, it, it had enough DNA material to pretty much turn into whatever Because you see wanted. part of the yeah. dog on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you see part of each person that thing took of. Yeah. So on that know. last form. I don't know. I was confused. I never knew if it was just one thing spreading mm-hmm. to multiple things or if it was three separate entities working in tandem. I, yeah. I don't know. Something. Would be interesting yeah. to, to know. We'd have to... Take it on a rewatch, figure it out. I know. Uh, any other bro moments here? You no, talked about yeah. all mine. Talked about the rest of them. Same here. Well, let's get into the facts then. Yeah, let me hit you with the budget. And I was kind of surprised by the budget because it's a 1982 film. So you wouldn't think it'd be that expensive. But to make this movie, it took $15 million. Wow. In 1982. That's um, a lot. Which also I think it made quite a bit for opening weekend. It made $3.1 million for opening weekend. Um, 19.6 million for U.S. and Canada, and 19.6 only added about 32 thousand dollars worldwide. Mm. Okay, so it made its money, but I, what I think, because people at the time hated this movie, <laughs> people dog on this movie. Yeah. yeah, and what I'm thinking is they were probably expecting that they were going to get way more, because I believe Halloween 
was made for very little and it made like 30 million dollars or something the like that. The first Halloween? Yeah, in like the 70s. And it was like unheard of. It was it was a craze like you could make these horror films for super cheap and make tons of money off of it. Mm. So 1970, I think, right? I th- uh, yeah, I think that they were maybe expecting that they were going to make more money than they actually did, which I don't know. Holy cow. So the budget for Halloween for the 1978 film was $325,000. For U.S. and Canada made, uh, for worldwide, I guess, in total, made $47.1 million. Yeah. Insane return. <laughs> Holy like, I think, and I think that that's what they cow. were thinking they were going to get with something like this, mm. but ended up not getting it. So strange. That is insane. Yeah. So strange how the, like, media works. Yeah. That's so weird. Weird. I actually have um, a fact here in regards to the director of the film, John Carpenter. He stated that all of, out of all of his films, this is his personal favorite. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. The stinkiest one, <laughs> according to media, is yeah. this one's his favorite. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, so, accordingly, so actually, apparently, this film is actually considered a benchmark in special makeup effects. The effects were made, were created by Rob Botton, who was only 22 years old when he started this project. Wow. Yeah. 22, 22 year old. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's got to be motivation right oh, there. Oh, I can't. I, I can't compare. Yeah, There's no way I could do anything like this. Yeah, yeah. that's, man, that's pretty impressive. Awesome. Um, I have one, and I thought it was really interesting because the when the Norwegian guy comes and he has the gun and he's saying his words, it's actually un- can be understood by a Norwegian, mm-hmm. uh, albeit broken Norwegian, but the line it gets translated to, get the heck out of here, that's not a dog, it's some sort of thing, it's imitating a dog, it isn't real, get away you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so he literally has tried to describe it, but they just don't understand. They have that yeah. language barrier. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was interesting that it they actually went out of their way to yeah. have so, it real. So to bring it back actually to people not being too fond of this film whenever it originally released, um, John Carpenter, he's actually, he takes all of his failed movies pretty hard, but this film's initial negative reception disappointed him the most, he states. Not only was it, what, not only did critics call it a box office bomb because it didn't make as much money as they were expecting, um, critics panned its gory effects and tone and characters as well. Vincent Canby called it, quote, too funny looking to be disgusting. It qualifies only as instant junk. Dave Kerr wrote that it was, quote, hard to tell who's being attacked and hard to care. Likewise, Roger Ebert was disappointed by the, quote, superficial characterizations and the implausible behavior, and he dismissed the film as being nothing more than a knockoff of Alien. He would later go on to say uh, Carpenter was more particularly upset by Christian Nibby, who is the director of the original yeah, film. Yeah, this kind of hurts. Yeah, and... Uh, the, the original director of the film, The Thing from Another World, which came out in 51, he publicly de- denounced, denounced Carpenter's it. version of the film and said, quote, if you want blood, go to the slaughterhouse. All in all, it's a terrific commercial for J&B Scotch, end quote. Oh. In response to the commercial bombing of the film, the studio canceled the multi-picture deal they had with Carpenter, who noted that his career would have been different if the film had been successful. Not surprisingly, he was extremely relieved when the film enjoyed a rich cult success following yeah. its home video release, along with critical reevaluation that it received <laughs> once that came you, along. You know well. how confused he could, would have been. Like, I feel like if I was in that position, I'd be like, "What do you mean? It's it's not bad. It's good. Like, uh, it's great." Yeah. And then to for them only to see it later down the line when he gets a DVD release, you'd be like, "I fucking told you, man." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's good that it ha- actually has a good ending to yeah. it. It's not just. Everyone thinks it's a stinker. Yeah, so definitely. That's awesome. So one thing that I thought was pretty cool, I put, obviously the facts that I put down, I always think that I, th- I think are interesting. Um, so the sound effects in the autopsy scene on the split thing um, was actually accomplished with paper towels and egg yolk. Nasty. That's weird. That's weird, yeah. but also kind of like gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just think about, if you ever had, if you ever crack an egg and you don't do it correctly and you get yeah. egg on you, it feels it feels slimy and slimy yucky. and gross. Yeah. yeah, you don't want it. Yeah. Speaking of how they made the shots in the shot of uh, McGreedy holding one of the dishes, the one that the dish has the the thing in it, he's holding a fake head. Oh, really? <laughs> it's a fake head, which I didn't know. But I or the hand that holds the dish is fake. Oh, wow. okay. Um, I don't know. They have like a prosthetic hand. I don't know why. Yeah. Why? Interesting. But I had read that fact and I thought it was funny. 
So actually, I read another one here that around the 15 minute mark in the film, when the dog wanders down the hallway and it pauses outside of a door, you can see a shadow of one of the men beckoning it to come in. Mm. You, you guys remember seeing that? No, yeah, I didn't notice it. Yeah, it's a it's just a shadow though, so yeah. we don't exactly we don't know. see who it is. Yeah. So John Carpenter wanted it to be mysterious, uh, which character who would be involved. So he didn't use any of his actors in the film to cast their shadow. He just used a random extra or somebody on the production side of the team to be the shadow. So that way nobody could kind of place who it would be. You couldn't be like, mm. oh, that's shadow. That's Snolls. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is cool. Speaking about the dog, at around 31 minutes, the goop shot at the dog in the kennel uh, scene was Caribou Pool. I don't know how to say I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm butchering it. But it's the same sun s- substance that's found inside Twinkies. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's what was being shot at that's the dog when it was being shot away? at the dog. Okay. Uh, hopefully, it tasted good. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looked pretty powerful. Yeah. But speaking of the the real the dog's real name was Jed, and John Carpenter was incredibly impressed by the work that the dog was doing. I mean, he was like literally he was the best dog actor we've seen. Yeah. And he was impressed by it. Um, he s- goes on to say that the shot of him walking down the hallway and searching for a human was done in about four or five takes. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's, that's super impressive. Cool. Yeah, you would think that handling a dog would be, oh, it you know, gets distracted all the time, but no, yeah. no. This one's incredibly well-trained. That's awesome. Thank you. So in regards to the actual filming process of this movie, to give the illusion of the icy Antarctic conditions, interior sets on the Los Angeles sound stages were refrigerated down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit while it was well over 100 outside. So That's they would, like, really freeze these guys out and make them feel the... They uh, didn't have to pretend to shiver. Yeah. They had to make really made them feel the elements and everything like that. Whenever okay. They Two things. To. That has to be... That's insane. One. But that has to be so bad on your body. Imagine going from 40 degrees, and then you're like, okay, you're done recording... Stepping outside to a hundred degree weather. Yeah, you'd have to have like a a medium to where you gotta yeah, like transition. recalibrate yourself. There's no way, dude. Imagine just <gasps> yeah, yeah. You're passing that, out for sure. I think that's one of the things that I that I appreciate too is like, you know, th- not a lot of films get made like that anymore. No. Like you have to act like you're cold. Yeah. How many more films get made where you're actually cold? Like actually like, in like freezing. You're, you're actually freezing. <laughs> like. I, I don't it's know. It's pretty I, easy I, to act cold when you literally are freezing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think that's something that just makes it takes, you know, the job away from the actor. It makes their job easier whenever you're in the actual conditions and yeah. you can really truly feel what your character is supposed to be feeling. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I have here actually was in regards to the uh, music that was composed by Ennio Marcone. Some of the unused music for this film would later be used by Quentin Tarantino in his movie, The Hateful Eight. Eight. Yeah. And it's uh, it's ironic, actually, that Marcone's thing score was nominated for the Razzie for worst score in the, in its year, but then <laughs> Hateful Eight would turn around and get nominated for best score uh, at the Oscars. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not going to be bad then, but good then. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, huh? Yeah. Um, Are you done? Yeah, I only have one more. Okay, and you actually, go, because then I have one more after you. It's considered to uh, Alec Baldwin... So he claims he auditioned for multiple film roles in this film before he was he became a big name, but he didn't get it. Hmm. Alec Baldwin. I could not imagine him in here. Me either. <laughs> uh if you don't have any more, I have I'll have uh I'll end it with this last one and why fans are kinda so ambiguous about the ending. Uh John Carpenter, he actually endorsed the two the th- game that came out in two thousand two called The Thing in which Mac and Childs were re- re- revealed to be humans, and it was considered to be canon. So you've got the game stating that they are both humans, but then on November 23rd of 2012, he tweeted, yes, one of them was a thing. <laughs> so fans are left questioning as what to... Is, what is it? As to what's the truth. Yeah. So it's, it's still ambiguous up to this point, and some people believe that they're both humans, some believe it was Child. Some believe it might have could have been McCready. Yeah, we don't know. That's funny. Yeah, pretty crazy. That's funny to to just keep the discourse. Going yeah, he's too, just he's just like, he's probably thinking to himself, "I twenty twelve, I'm gonna f him up right yeah. now. <laughs> They're not gonna see this one he's coming." He's a troll. Yeah, that's yeah, fun. He's a troll. All right, if that's it for uh, the facts side of things, what didn't work for this film? 
It's hard. I I really can't think of a single thing. Yeah, me either. I I, I truly can't think of something that doesn't work for this film. I I I don't know if you got something, Abe. I I mentioned it before recording. I just don't think I would rewatch it. Mm, okay. Or maybe I know you said it calls almost calls for a rewatch. Um I d- I don't know. I just don't feel that way. Mm, um Okay. I enjoyed the movie though. Don't get don't get me wrong. I didn't I just don't know if I personally would go out of my way again to watch this movie. Okay. Mm. And, but I don't see necessarily see that as a bad thing. Okay. Well, if that's it for what didn't work, I I'd like to argue that I think it is rewatchable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I I expected what that. Are the things <laughs> that did work for you. Yeah, I think it's insanely rewatchable and I when we get into the rating side of things, I think rewatches will only make me love this movie more. Mm. So, I can definitely see my rating changing here. But um yeah, I think it's super rewatchable. Um, I also, I have to say, like, I, I really loved the cinematography in this film. Mm-hmm. There were certain shots that, like, they almost felt like first person. And, like, when they would, like, walk through hallways or something like that and show you, like, the interior of the base and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or some of the certain, like, colors that are used, especially, like, when it's night and it's, a, like, super blue out, and, and bl- it's nothing but blue and black, and then you got these, like, orange light of the flares or the red lights and all that stuff. I thought that it was super sick. Loved a lot of the framing that is used as well as some of the camera movement and everything. It's beautiful. Yeah, I thought the pacing was awesome, too. Yeah. It really guides you along. It gives you enough information to be really intrigued at the, as to what's going to happen next, and it was all laid out in a in a way where you were just engaged the entire time. Yes. Questioning what what's real the entire time, and I think it's it has to do with just the pacing and the editing too. The mm-hmm. editing is just like, you know, it gives you exactly what you need, and then it moves on. Yes. And it doesn't linger too long in in a scare here, but it also doesn't cut off some of the the goriness that you need, like. The editors here knew exactly what the audience wanted to see mm-hmm. and what what was actually important to show for longer Definitely. periods of time. Mm. Definitely. I just I can't talk enough about the editing and the the pacing here. Yeah. And I think it, something that also we always we almost I feel like we almost talk about it about every movie is the soundtrack. And this one I do th- I really agree. I think it pairs really well with the cinematography and the pacing and it gets you to feel these things things just listening to the soundtrack um so i really enjoyed it like i said in the beginning it made me feel uneasy but it also made me want to know what's happening Mm -hmm. so it paired everything came together really really well Mm -hmm. yeah it just amplifies the tone of the entire movie yeah i also have to say i think the the writing is great yeah like it it there's no stone left unturned here and if there is a stone that you think is unturned it's been talked about but it's left ambiguous and it's left for you to to kind of put the pieces together and to find out like, okay, this piece of the puzzle goes here. Now, where is this piece? Mm-hmm. This could look in here or it could be here. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. And um, I have to say like my, my expectations for this film just continued to be subverted the entire time. And I yeah. loved that. It, there was no point where I thought, you know, okay, this is probably going to happen. Like I, anything well, that I thought was going to happen or take place, it was like, oh, nope, flip the script. Not like, predictable. We're, yeah, we're not doing this. It's not predictable in that aspect, and I really loved that. Yeah. Along with the writing, I really enjoyed a lot of the characters. Yeah. I think they all had a, a lot of their own unique style, but they worked together so great. Yeah. And they just had this, like, charisma about them. that mm-hmm. They all connected very well, and they were strong. I mean, they really were. They were the drivers of the film. Yeah. And I just, I can't talk enough about, like, especially McCready. I, Kurt Russell, he, he does a great job at being the guy who kind of is he he has to take control of the situation rather than always be lagging behind yeah Mm. and he's the one that's he almost kind of reminds me of like a macgyver type where he's (laughs) gonna be like the fixer and the i'm gonna cut your you know he's like the the creative thinker guy about the blood and all that stuff so it really he is like the anchor point for this film for me yeah definitely i also i think it goes without saying special effects in this movie dude top tier top tier like i i can only imagine that this movie will only continue to get better with age because of the use of practical effects, the, the makeup use of puppets and animatronics. Like it's, it's all so good. And like it, it, again, it just continues to make the movie age so well. And I, this movie 
would suck like if it used all CGI for yeah. it. Like I mean, I, just just look at the 2011 movie. Yeah. Dude, don't look at it. CGI <laughs> alien, CGI the thing, and nobody likes it. Yeah, <laughs> nobody <laughs> likes yeah. it. Yeah, it, it. Yeah, the CGI is not always the best option. No. Um, I also have to say, I think we talked about a little bit about the characters, but I think just the acting in general, mm-hmm. just it feels good. Like it feels good. <laughs> good. <laughs> it feels very genuine. Like. I and I, and I I think this because I I actually had read something in regards to the making of the of certain scenes, and John Carpenter would purposefully film scenes where uh, nobody knew what the thing was at first, and the he would do this and not tell anybody who the thing actually was, mm. and so it, everyone would be uneasy. Yeah, it creates this it creates this genuine feeling of unease, like. I know it's not me and my character, but could it possibly be my co-star? Like I don't, I don't know who it is. So it creates for this genuine feeling of yeah. un- unknown. Mm-hmm. And then you know the only time that they would know who the thing is is whenever they would film the scenes where it turns into or reveals itself. And uh, yeah, just gotta say it's great acting not only on their parts and also great direction from John Carpenter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I just <laughs> I pretty much think everything works here. Yeah, same. It's all just awesome. If that's it, who wins the movie? Yeah, McCready. I'm putting... You put McCready and Kurt yeah. Russell? Yeah, yeah I, did, I put Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Same here. He yeah. kills it. He absolutely kills it, man. What are we doing for some themes? Mm. Could be interesting. I put Among Us? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean... I think of that guy with his head going like... You know, it's all like four. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> it's the troll guy. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, Among Us? No, I think... <laughs> Sussy Baka? Come on, on, Walt. (laughs) I'm lost. The loss of identity. Okay. Because this thing pretty much takes your identity away. That Mm -hmm. that could be one thing. Uh, A lot to do with trust. Yeah, I I had also wrote wrote trust wrote down trust nobody. Trust no one. Like you're your own. You trust yourself. That's it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to looking out for yourself. Only look, out, look out for yourself. Look out for yourself and nobody else. Make sure you're good. Like <laughs> you got your own back. Don't feed yeah. your homies this time. Yeah, yeah, no way. You don't know who your homie is in this homies one. Homies don't eat today. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you got anything? Yeah, I put trust. Trust. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is, man. Okay. Well, what are we gonna rate this film? I'm gonna give this one a nine. Okay. It is so close to being a ten, but yeah. it's a nine for me. I think a very solid nine. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love it. Yeah. I think it's awesome. It's a great uh, classic horror sci-fi movie that yeah. has everything you want. Mm-hmm. So a nine for me. I, I think I'm going to back you up and say a nine as well. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I give it a 7.5. 7.5. Okay. Gotcha. Definitely. Not bad. Not yeah. a bad movie. I, I enjoyed it. and Yeah. Yeah. I think with more rewatches and the more time I spend with this film, I think I'll just grow to love it even more. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be one of those things where – you need to grow. I get it. One of those things. No, no. I, I think it's going to be one of those movies where I, I watch it. And after I do like a second watch or third watch, I'm just going to be like, Man, I love this thing. <laughs> like it, it is just such a good film. And I, I, I'm glad that I own it. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, when I have kids, I'll be able to point it to this and they're going to be like, what is this movie? I'm going to be like, Oh, let me oh, tell you, <laughs> this is great. Like we're going to talk about this. Yeah. It's go. It's awesome. So, all right. Well, with that being said, that's it. It's the end of the episode, you guys. So thank you for sticking all the way to the end. If you did, we appreciate you. If you did stick all the way to the end, leave us a like and a comment on the YouTube video, or hit that subscribe button so that way you can, you know, tune into all the action that we're putting out here weekly. Uh, also hit the n- notification bell so that way you're notified whenever episodes go up on YouTube. They usually get posted around Wednesdays at nine fifteen. Um, you can also listen to the podcast on the audio platforms like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts or anything like that. And um, yeah, leave le- you know leave rate and reviews on those platforms as well. Let people know that you're digging the show and you know share the episodes with somebody. Share the episodes with someone who you know is a film lover or someone who you know loves the specific movie. Um, I know with another couple other vi- movie podcasts or film and TV review podcasts that I watch, I definitely will find episodes of like a movie I've watched and want to see what they think on mm-hmm. a certain episode. So if you know someone like that or if you yourself are like that, 
go through our catalog or something and, and pick a movie that you've that you've watched or that you know and and listen to the episode and see what we got to say about it um as always you can contact us through our episode descriptions um, we've got our Instagrams there as well as our letterbox accounts and emails. Use those platforms to either get in contact with us and leave us, you know, recommendations for films we should check out, um, constructive criticisms, all that stuff. You know, it's we're, we're open to anything and everything, and we want to make the show the best that we can possibly uh we want to make it the best that it can possibly be and uh, that can only happen if you guys are you know continuing to to help us figure this thing out just like we're trying to do so yep uh, with that being said i think it's ab it is my pick what do you got for us i was stuck between two movies and you guys know what with two movies i was trying to choose mm-hmm. i've guessed here i don't know if it's the one um uh, is it no it? it's not i you changed switched it up, it up? okay I, so I was stuck between Paranormal Activity and the Blair Witch Project, um, and I actually ended up going with the Blair Witch Project. Okay. Yeah. Um, I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it probably once or no, I've watched it twice, and each time, I would you would find myself, I find myself covering my eyes. Okay. Nineteen ninety nine, and it's a nineteen ninety nine film. Um, it's basically like a documentary. Yeah, this is the start of the the found footage. Oh gosh, like so category I, of film. Yeah, I prepared myself for shaky cam. Yes, yeah, I have to prepare. Yeah, this is otherwise what I hate it. <laughs> yeah, this is a very shaky cam film. Okay, um, but I think it's only fitting with, with Halloween around the corner, and mm-hmm. a lot of people say this movie was one of the scariest movies ever since The Exorcist came out. Wow. Ooh. Um, so I want to see what you guys think. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it before. I have not. I vividly remember seeing the cover of this film, though, in my uncle Ryan room, my uncle Ryan's room, and I remember I went in the room and I saw the the VHS cover, mm-hmm. and it's just like a uh, the woman's eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's like lit up, and then there's like trees behind yeah. it, yeah, like that red, uh, little like figurine thing, the stick figure, yeah, right, yeah. In, right in the middle, yeah. And I remember seeing that as a kid and like being like, "What the heck is this <laughs> thing? I don't know what it is." And my uncle was just like, oh, it's a scary movie. Like, oh, it's yeah, it's so scary. So a lot of people say it's scary. I personally think it's a scary film. I haven't watched it in at least five years, so maybe I can grow out of it. Okay. Um, but it is streaming, actually. It's on HBO Max. Okay. Um, I made sure to check before I uh, announced it. So it is streaming on HBO Max. So check it out there. Um, and I'm excited to watch it. Um, yeah, I've never seen it, so yeah. I I'm excited for you guys to watch it. See what you guys. It'll think. be my first watch as well. I'm going in blind, so hopefully I get scared, man. I'm <laughs> ready. I am ready. All right. Um, but yeah, that is my pick, the Blair Witch Project. All right. All right. We'll check out the Blair Witch Project next week and tune in and uh, see what we have to say about that film. As always, this has been the Film Bros Podcast. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>